Welcome to the Tough Decisions Network for Entrepreneurs. I'm Dan Hanford, and my wife, Danae, and I interview successful people sharing stories behind tough decisions that they've had to make along their journey as an entrepreneur. On the podcast with us today is Kira Golden. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Well, Kira, I want you to get us started by talking to us a little bit about your background as an entrepreneur and where your current focus is. Yeah, I, I'm one of those people I always knew I was going to own my own business and started buying real estate at 18 and kind of took it from there. Our focus right now is really positioning in a bit of a defensive posture with, with our group to really focus on cash flow going into this next market turn. So we have piles of cash coming in every month to go out and, and buy like crazy. So we're getting excited for another opportunity to do that. Well, I want you to get us started by talking about a tough decision that you've had to make along this journey as an entrepreneur. I like to get started with one that we call a sore thumb tough decision. So it's a tough decision that you had to face. You made a decision and it didn't have that good of an outcome, an outcome that was worse than you'd expected. And kind of walking us through some of those lessons that you learned. Yeah, that's uh, generous of you. I certainly think I make wrong decisions all the time. I'm like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? But but to your point, you know, you make the best decision you can with the information you have available at the time. You know, there's a couple of examples, but one that comes to mind right away. I mean, as I grow as an entrepreneur, I have to rely on other people more and more to be successful. And that process in general has been tough. Learning who I can trust, who I can't, what questions to ask to vet who to trust. And there was an architect we did a joint venture with that really just, he came across really polished, like he knew what he was doing. And we thought we did a lot of good quality due diligence and you know, as we got into the project, we found that, you know, his numbers weren't really as much in alignment with what we would expect to see, you know, as what we are. And, um, you know, we had to kind of jump in and, and exit him from the project and, and take it over and, and try to get it to a happy landing. What are some of the lessons that you learned through that as well? I mean, every time we do something, even whether it's successful or not successful, or I guess the intended outcome or not the intended outcome, we debrief and we look at how we can make better systems and processes. And that particular project, you know, we really came away with a more formal structured vetting process for our partners. So we have a a really structured process now and it continues to become even more structured. And then the big takeaway, and I think that I'm grateful for is that, you know, when we had to have some hard conversations with our investors, they really got it. They understood, you know, that the market changed over time. Um, So, you know, maybe the decision we made at the time was even like you said, maybe it was the right one, but the market changed more aggressively than we anticipated. And, and they got that. And I was really grateful that we have the kind of investors we do that are sophisticated enough to understand that while making money in real estate is phenomenal and I believe the best way to build wealth, it is not always easy and it is not always, you know, roses and that there are, there are tough decisions, there are tough times and weathering through that, man, that makes us and our investor group so much stronger. So like you said, I mean, in some way you're grateful for those experiences. So let's shift here now and talk about a tough decision that you've had to make as an entrepreneur that had a really good and positive outcome and some of the lessons you learned through that. Yeah. I mean, I like projects and I like areas that other people can't see the opportunity. And I think that being able to see things differently is, is the value add, right? And so, you know, we took on early on one of, in our uh, group, uh, a, a project that, you know, we got some feedback from you know, local people, local quote unquote experts who were just like, you know, don't do it. Don't do that project. It's not in the right area. It's not, you know, not the right kind of project. And we could see something in it and in the area that we believed in and, and it worked out well. Um, the, the area continued to improve and, you know, we had, you know, over a 30% annualized return on that project. So, you know, trusting our gut and, and going with what we thought was right made, made a lot of sense there and everyone did well for it. So talk to us a little bit about what, you know, your company does in regards to these investments. What kind of investments are you looking for? What kind of investors are you looking for? And those kind of things. 
Yeah, we are, we're a value add company. I mean, we focus on opportunities to do value add. Um, lately, as I said, we're heavily much more focused on cash flow. But, you know, depending on the market cycle, we've been, you know, growth focused. We've done deep discounted value add. But right now, we're really looking at, at cash flow, you know, spin off of capital to continue doing more buying as, we, as the market turns. We also anticipate, you know, I'm really focused right now down in Puerto Rico. I think that that's kind of the last frontier in terms of, the last recession. Um, they're, they're four or five years behind. So I feel like we're getting a little extra pickup time. It's like overtime uh, investing down here in Puerto Rico, where the US has already sort of hit its max, from my opinion. And then, you know, as far as investors, you know, we, we've actually been going through the process of reducing the number of investors we work with and really focusing on deepening the relationships. Um, you know, we're always open to having conversations with someone who might be a fit but uh, we've gotten pretty picky. I mean, we really want to work with people who share our long-term focus, who think, you know, it's about buying right, positioning deals well, structuring them well, getting good debt, and, um, and letting real estate do what it does and build long-term wealth. Um, so if people are looking for sexy, fast, quick transactions or easy money or get rich fast, that's not a fit. But if they're steady state and want to build some good long-term wealth, then you know, we should have a conversation. Sure. What would you say to an investor that might be a little bit pessimistic about real estate right now because of you know the state of you know the fluctuating interest rates and obviously looking at the stock market and what it did you know a couple of weeks ago and, and, and dropping as, as far down as it did? What would you say to an investor that might be a little bit pessimistic about that? I'd say that's okay. You go ahead and be pessimistic. I'm not here to convince anyone of anything else. <laughs> you know, we have our, our thesis and, and we think that Steady, consistent investing, steady, consistent um, seeking of deal opportunities, leveraging the relationships that we have to find good quality deals. There are always deals to have. And, and in fact, I think companies like us make our reputation in these markets we're heading into because we can find good quality deals and we can position ourselves accordingly. I think that being pessimistic or making an investment strategy out of a, a fear of what might happen next and, and thinking you can predict the future. I think that's where people go wrong. But having said that, you know, there's lots of different investment theories out there and, and I'm certainly not here to change anyone's mind. I'm just here to find our people and, and, and do right by them. Sure. Well, that's a great answer. I like that. Here, I have a follow-up question to the decision that you were talking about earlier where, you know, you said that you were able to, I guess, have a vision that not a lot of other people might have and see where there's an opportunity when other people might, you know, be riding off a certain property or an area or that kind of thing. I'm just curious if you can tell our listeners kind of what your strategy is and, and how you balance you know, lots of people saying, no, that's not a good investment. That's not a good investment. When you know you should listen to that advice versus, okay, I really see something here that not anybody else sees. And and this is a valid point of view. That's a really good question and a hard one to answer because if you just trust yourself and you block out, quote, the noise of everyone else, you can err towards arrogance, right? And not heeding the wisdom of others. And if you listen to others all the time and don't trust your gut, you err towards regression to the mean. And all you'll ever do is what everyone else is doing. You'll ride the down wave with everyone. You'll ride the up wave with everyone. And you'll be in good company, but you won't make much money. For me, I think the answer rests in my bias is to not listen to the noise but to intentionally and, and very consciously curate relationships around me with people who I see have done what I want to do. So typically I'm 35, typically I'm around 55, 65, 70 year old people who have already built significant wealth in real estate and who already share my core value of long-term buy and hold value creation. And I listen very, very carefully to those people and what they say and what they did and, and discuss with them. And I listen very little to kind of the overall noise or, you know, popular or general opinion or conventional wisdom. You know, so in other words, I, I mirror and mimic those that have shown me and proven that they've done what I want to do, that they're going, that they've been where I want to go. And I'm very humble and very open. <laughs> it's ironic to call yourself very humble, but, you know, <laughs> but I, I, I do, you know, I, I listen very intently to what they say 
and then I block out everything else because it's just noise. Could you share some strategies that you use when you are facing a difficult decision, whether it's just, you know, in running your, your business or maybe it, it's when you're trying to decide on whether an investment is a go or no? Yeah, I do a lot of meditation. <laughs> um, I spend a good chunk of my time in very, very quiet reflection. And my typical process is, you know, I'm a, I'm a sleep thinker. I don't know, you know, like you, you have a problem, you go to bed and you let your subconscious work on it and you wake up with the solution. So, which I appreciate because thinking during the day is really hard. You know, the kids are making noise, there's people calling, there's questions, there's so much work to do. So, you know, in the evening before I go to bed, I really consciously set an intention of a problem for my mind to work on. I do my meditation practice before and um, I, you know, journal, whatever I go to sleep. And then in the morning, I'm immediately ready to start writing down the stream of conscious of what came out of that thinking in the evening. And then, of course, I do the practical steps of, of checking with and getting the buy-in from my mentors, my team, that you know what, what I'm feeling led is correct, is, is in alignment with what our culture and our people are saying is correct. We check with our investors. We, you know, we're very actively involved with our investors. We love to get their opinions. Um, we're, we might be unusual in that in the space, but, <laughs> uh, but we, we love opinions. So we get that from everybody. And and, and then we make a choice and, and then we begin to execute. And, and the biggest thing too is trying to not look back or second guess those choices. Once they've been made, you put the proper thought in on the front end and then you execute uh, and, and you just do so full out so that you don't let, you know, let anything get in the way. All right, we're going to take a quick break and hear from one of our show sponsors when we come back. We'll talk to Kira about some of her favorites as it relates to her life as an entrepreneur. Have you ever thought about investing in real estate, but find yourself so busy that you don't have time for it? Do you have FOMO, which is the fear of missing out? At HanfordCapital.com, we help investors with passive real estate investments that project better returns than traditional investment vehicles, such as the stock market. If you'd like to find out more about our passive real estate investments, visit HanfordCapital.com. That's H-A-N-D-F-O-R-D Capital.com. We will jump on a call with you to discuss your investment goals and to see if our investments are a good fit for you. This advertisement is not to be construed as an offer or recommendation to buy or sell a security. Visit HanfordCapital.com. All right, we are back with Kira Golden. And Kira, we're going to be going through a series of quick questions and answers that we call the trifecta. And I want you to start us off with one that is, the, what's your favorite technology that you use in business that helps make your life easier every day? Uber Conference. All right. And what's a quote that you have heard that's helped you as an entrepreneur? Some things just take time. You can't make a baby by getting nine women pregnant for a month. That's Mr. Buffett, one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds I've like him. Never heard that <laughs> what's a book that you have read that's helped with your decision making or the way you run your, your business? Baby wise, the entire series. So I'm a single mom of two kids and making sure my babies sleep through the night <laughs> was critical. Super important. Um, <laughs> I could not run my business without at least seven hours of sleep. And kind of all kidding aside, there's a lot of practical wisdom that comes from being a mother that I directly apply to my business. There's a phrase in the book, uh, begin in the way you want to go. Uh, I like that much better than fake it till you make it. I, I'm not into faking it, but consciously beginning in the way that you want to end up, whether that's raising your children or building your company or setting the tone in a relationship with your investors, beginning in the way you want to go instead of cutting corners and thinking you're going to fix it later. Uh, that's been critical for us. And what's the next thing for you right now on your vision or dream board? We are in the process of building some additional relationships to really ramp up. So we've spent the last couple of years building our foundation of our base with our investors, building our foundation of our local operators, vetting, you know, building those systems and processes. And uh, we're excited about 2019 as an opportunity to really begin to scale and grow and hit the gas. Uh, we've been kind of holding back on doing that for a while and, and we're ready and I'm excited. And how can the listeners reach out to you if they want to contact you or follow you more or maybe even, you know, reach out to see if maybe they might be a good fit for your, some of your investments? Yeah. So you know, our company is Direct Source Wealth. We have a website. People can opt in there. And also, uh, you know, LinkedIn and Facebook where, you know, I'm active on both can either connect with me personally or we have a company site. 
And, uh, you know, otherwise I think on our, our website, there's an 800 number. It's 844-SOURCE-4, like source for deals, 844-SOURCE-4. And that'll connect you with um, one of our staff members who's ready and standing by to, to make an initial connection. And, and then uh, if it's a fit, I, I certainly hop on the phone personally and connect with, with our investors as well, which I love doing. Well, Kira, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your schedule to be with us here today on the podcast. I look forward to continuing to follow you as an entrepreneur and I'm looking forward to continue to see you grow and hopefully have you on as a future episode as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Tough Decisions Network. Be sure to visit toughdecisions.net to gain access to show notes for this episode and to join our free weekly entrepreneur email where we will send you news about the latest technology for your business, inspiring quotes, and the latest books for entrepreneurs. That's toughdecisions.net.